felters and welcome. So today we're going to be making these really super sweet pony baubles and I tried to do them a while ago and it just didn't work so I've waited a bit and I've managed to come up with this design. I hope you like it. They've got little spots on their bots <laughs> and they've got uh, ribbons so that they can hang off doors or hooks on the wall or you can do them without the ribbon. It's completely up to you. So we're going to start off today just taking some core wool and it's really easy you're just gonna I fold the edges over into the middle and then start to form a ball so I've got my multi needle tool which is really helpful for speeding things up now normally I say uh, fold it really really tightly and the tighter you fold it the easier it is but with this we're just trying to get the ball shape so I fold it quite tightly and then I spend quite a bit of time just going over it with the multi-needle tool to try and get that nice round ball shape and this is going to be the main body of the horse so um, once you've formed the ball shape then take your coat colour that you're going to do for your pony now I've done quite a few different colours so that you can see you can mix and match you could even do bright colours it's completely up to you so I'm taking the um, coat layer and I'm just going to cover up all around the ball and then I'm still felting it quite lightly with the multi-needle tool. Um, I do have a video on multi-needle tools to show you which ones I think are really good and what needles to use with them because it's so important. And obviously pull out any bits because this is going to be the top layer of the coat. So keep covering it all up. This video today I'm going to do it's a little bit longer and less speeding up. I thought uh, some people don't like it with too much speeding up so I've reduced it a bit and we'll see what you think of it. So here I am just neatening and tidying it a bit. Oh sorry drinking tea again. <laughs> Never stop drinking tea. Um, and I've gone all over it and it's quite squishy so it's not at the finish stage yet but just to show you it's four inches across. That doesn't help. That helps. That's better. Four inches across. Um, so that's when it's nice and soft and then I'm just going to take a needle and we're just going to start firming it up because this is going to be the outer layer and we are going to attach lots of things to it. So we need it to be fairly firm, not really solid, just fairly firm. So this is the bit, it takes a while um, and you just go all the way around, it's quite therapeutic and we just, um, I'm just using a 38 a triangular needle so it's not even a special needle or anything and you could if you had a needle felting machine which I've done a review on that as well um, you could use it at this point but you see it's just firming it up nicely so we'll just do it all the way over There we go, I firmed it all up, give it a little roll um, just to see if it feels even and feels smooth and this is going to be the body of the horse and so after it started at four inches and after you've firmed it all up it's three to three and a half, it's not going to matter too much if you're three or the three and a half um, but that's roughly the size it is across. You can do these smaller, you can do these bigger. So there we go. Now we're going to start the legs. So take a stretch of your wool and just roll it up. And I tuck one end in a little bit. And we're just going to start felting. So you felt and roll. And one end you're going to round off. So that's going to be the um, end of the foot or hoof. And the other end we're going to leave fluffy because that's going to help with attaching it to the body. And I do spend quite a bit of time and make these legs fairly firm. Um, you could put a pipe cleaner through the middle. It's just, it's not essential for these because um, they're fairly short 
and fairly sh and strong enough if you've sort of felt them for quite a while. So it's spend at least five or six minutes on each leg and it's about an inch and a half is the really well felted bit and then the rest of it is sort of all fluffy. So that's for the attachment and that's how they're going to go on. So you've got one leg, you need to do another three. There we go. So spend a bit of time on them, get them quite neat. And now we're going to attach to the body. Um, if you look at it, I'm just squidge, I squidge it down a bit and try and imagine what's going to be the front and what's going to be the back. And this is a front leg and that would be a back leg. That's how I sort of view it in my head. Um, so take the leg and then my multi needle tool I'll use. It really helped me attach them quite quickly and get them into place. Um, if they're in the wrong place, as with all felting, you can just pull them off and start again. And so once I've got the place roughly okay, I'm going to take some of the uh, coat colour, keep it all, the edges all, um, what would we say, all ragged, and then it will merge really nicely. And this is going to cover up um, your leg attachment area. And so I'm just using the multi-needle tool, and then we're going to go over it with a 38 needle and neaten it all up. And once you've done the first leg, go on and just attach the other three. Moving on to the neck, um, so it's a bit of a an oblong shape, so take a slightly larger bit than you did for the legs and we'll roll it up, very similar shape but don't tuck in one end and the neck's sort of just going to come out of, of the body at an arch. So I roll it up and then I start felting the middle area and I leave either end fluffy so that we can help with attaching onto the body and attaching the head as well. So I, I do this a little bit flatter, but still it's about an inch wide and about half an inch thick, um, but it's definitely more oblong than the legs. And I'll show you a little bit closer. See, And I try and build up an arch and, and that end seemed a bit wider. So I've chosen that end to go at the base and I'm just going to add a bit more on to make that bit wider at the base of the neck and it's not much wool but it just really helps with the effect of looking like a, a proper neck. I think my necks are quite long you could probably do your necks a little bit shorter if you want. Um, I'm more than happy for you guys to make and sell these um, it'd be great if you could just make some little adaptions yourself. That would be fantastic. But all the teaching. Oh, let's just have a look. The length, it's about, the main part of the neck is about two inches. And with all the fluffiness is about three. But um, all the teaching methods, obviously, and uh, the video uh, uh, or anything like that, I retain the rights to. But um, yeah, I'm more than happy for you to make and sell these. It's not a problem. It'd be great if you could 
Uh, credit me though, that would be absolutely fantastic. And most people do. I have to say, everyone's being really good and um, just saying, you know, tutorial from Felts by Philippa, especially if you go to sell them. So there we go, we're neatening it up. And you see how it's quite thin um, and then wider, sort of going down to the base. I'm just checking the thickness to see if uh, if I've made it sort of strong enough. And then we're just going to attach it on. And it's really easy because you've left all that bottom bit fluffy. And it looks too long at the moment. That's absolutely fine. You can concertina it down a bit. So, yeah, I have speeded it up, guys, because this video will end up being so long. It's lovely to get to know everybody and to chat for a bit more. But I think some of you will probably be like, I haven't got time. <laughs> so... And then once you've attached it, get uh, some more wool, nice and loose and, and fluffy, and then it will cover up all the joins. And it also makes the neck a little bit thicker. So I did it round the back, and then I do it round the front as well, and it just covers up all the joins. And then spend quite a bit of time just firming it up. And that will really help. There we go. Nicely joined on to the body. Next we're going to do the head and it's just an oblong shape again. And you round off the nose. It's sort of similar to the legs. Probably even the same size. So roll it up. And start felting. I could almost jump this bit. <laughs> it's really similar to the legs. And there we go. Start to round off one end. Just to give you an idea of the actual size. So the firm part of it is about an inch and a half. And I do spend quite a bit of time firming this up because we're going to put the eyes and the nose on. Um, there we are a little bit sort of up close. I'm using a 40 spiral to finish it off. That's my favourite combination, 38 and then 38 triangle, 40 spiral. And it just gets a lovely finish and tidies all the bits up. And then just hold it on to the head and see I've left the back of it fluffy. And don't worry about that join because we're going to cover it again. Just get the head on at the angle you want it. And just sort of attach it and then felt it down by holding it in the at the angle you want. See I'm sort of forcing it down there. And then get some more and cover up the join, put it over the top, and it makes it a little bit thicker. And don't worry about doing loads, because we're going to have ears, and there's quite a lot of um, wool in the base of the ears. So you don't have to put loads on at this stage. And then just spend time firming it all up. And there he is. I have to say, this is the stage where he could be a dinosaur, if you fancy making a dinosaur instead, you could deviate off. Give it a tail and you've got a nice little dino in a nice green purple colour. So here we are, we are going to do the ears. So I get a nice little piece and then I make sure it's flat, uh, even it out. Put it on the mat and needle felt a triangle. You don't have to do the bottom bit of it, but do the two edges of a triangle. And this gives you a lovely edge bit and it will stick to the mat. It, everything sticks to the mat. It's really annoying. But it's quite useful now because you fold over the edge and it gives you this lovely edge of the ear. And it works. It's fantastic. So just fold it across and then start felting it in. And it gives you an ear which is a nice thickness with a lovely edge. You don't have to get the card out. So it's just really useful and it's a nice little point. Don't felt the bottom of it because that bit's going to be loose for attaching. And then peel it off the mat. It really sticks. It's not a problem. And then you're going to spend quite a bit of time, see all that fluffiness, neatening it up. And then again, I do quite often go to the 40 spiral to do all the neatening up here. And you've got a nice tip of the ear there as well. So... It's a great little way to do it. And then that's how we're going to do the ear is just fold it in half. 
there's the second ear so felt through the base of the ear so it stays folded in half you guys have seen my tutorials before you know how to do this and then hold it on the horse in the position you would like it they're sort of pointing forwards and down a little bit and start joining it on you've got plenty of fluffiness and then a little bit extra to cover up the join mark now where there's a little bit of a join down the ear we'll see it in a bit don't worry because see that line there that will get covered up by the forelock so don't panic too much just definitely the back of it you want to be quite neat there's the other ear it was a little bit too high up so you just sort of pull it down a bit and then felt it and then there's a little bit of tidying going on there he is two ears now we're going to do the eyes and I did sleeping eyes because if you get the eyes wrong especially as a beginner um, it could totally ruin it so sleeping eyes or shut eyes they're very sweet very easy and they look good so take some wool this is um, a tops type wool because I don't have any other carded black I would normally use carded and just cut a piece longer than you need it and I do use a finer needle for this just because it helps with securing the wool in quite delicately and so start at one point and then bring it down and then back up again a little bit tricky but if you practice it'll be fine and then the end see it's too long so I'm just felting it and then I will fold those end bits over and poke them in if they're really too long you just cut them off but it's nice to get all the end bits in nice and neat there we go and that's a, a little eye and then do the same on the other side I had to do it upside down it's quite hard on the other side and then you're gonna have to uh, I'm gonna apologize because my <laughs> uh, SD card was full so the nostrils are just two round blobs just put them on needle felt them in but it failed to record so next we're going to do the ribbon and again I've speeded this up <laughs> any ribbon anything would do you don't have to you might want them to just be standing so I sew through the end to keep them together then I fold over just to give it a nice base to attach with and this is exactly how I did the other the highland cow baubles or the sheep baubles I'm going to be called the bauble lady I think after this um, and then once that's attached over then we put it at the base of the mane really quite close to the base and you sort of felt it through and up um, try and use a color that's the same as your horse it makes it a lot easier and lots of in and throughs and then you're going to have to check that it's hanging correctly if it isn't then adjust it forwards or backwards because it's annoying if they tip um, and then when I finish it off I just put it through quite long and cut it off there and sometimes you can put a little bit of wool over the top just to cover it a bit but you cannot felt that through the ribbon so I sort of end up going around that bit but it it covers it really nicely there we go nice nice neat finish oh and the fun bit the mane I am doing a dun coloured pony so they've got a black mane and tail as you can see I did multi coloured on the the bay and I think I did was it white on the grey one so any colours that you've got that look nice just go for it so take out they have to be tops by the way it well it really helps if it's tops it looks a lot lot nicer um, I've got a, a video on wools if you're confused about wools at all and it explain all the differences. So take the tops out and lay, lay them across the back of the neck and then felt through the middle and try and check that you're keeping it straight and through the middle. And just do lots of felting in a line, secure it in and then fold it over and it kind of goes a bit mad. So you have to fold it down into position and sometimes you do a, the odd couple of felt with the needle 
not too many because it will show um, and then I felt it down between the front leg or just under the front leg just because that's the length of my tops um, and I sort of twist them a bit and I just think it looked neat and out of the way you could trim them shorter um, and then just felt it so it stays in a bit I just thought this was quite sweet imagine this with multicolored manes it would look really nice and as some of the ladies in my Patreon were saying, because I've shown them this, you could make a unicorn really easily. So this is the forelock. So exactly the same. Take a much smaller piece because when you fold it over, it's going to be quite thick. So you don't need much. Felt it through, fold it over. And then you can split it either side or to one side, to the other side. Um, I was just trying to balance, uh, balance them up by doing it to the other side. And then I left this one long for a bit and then I trimmed it shorter it's up to you it's kind of tricky to work out what looks best but you could have a play around with it I'd love to see them anyone who's done one Instagram is a great way to tag me see I trimmed it off there in the end because I didn't like that extra bit and now the tail now I take quite a big thick piece and you have to hold it right between your fingers um, and, and try and keep it as narrow as possible so it's quite tricky lots of felting in in a line across to make sure it's really secure and then you'll fold it down and it's quite wide but if you hold it in and felt very carefully sort of felt the edges it'll stay down and stay in a little bit I had to give it a good couple of felts and then trim it to whatever length or don't trim it and these are the dapples I did and I just thought they looked cute and it gives them a bit of distinction and I know done ponies don't have dapples this strong but three little dapples on their bottom nice and easy um, I even did some dapples on the bay but they were quite a light chestnut colour you could do some on the chest up the neck you could do it in all sorts of different places you could do a little heart on the bottom that would be really sweet so you can play around with these quite a lot there's those three and then do three on the other side and there he is he's all done um and so here's the bay with the multicolored mane and a white blaze and then the gray i like the gray he's my favorite that would be a great unicorn so i hope you've enjoyed it um i am doing a couple more videos in the making it's just i've been doing my online course for my highland cow head here they are on the shelf and um, they've made it up to the shelf. They look lovely. So thanks so much for watching. Any questions, put them below and take care, everybody. And we'll see you again soon.